Today, we are going to be going over 15 Brawl Stars facts that I think have a high chance of you not knowing. Now, I think this can be even more fun if we try a bit harder. I would love if you guys know any of these to let me know how many you ended up knowing. But I got a feeling if you're not an OG or haven't been playing this game for a very long time, some of these will surprise you. Fact. Number one. And starting things off a little bit on the lighter side of things, I would say, but one of the main structures that we have inside of Brawl Stars are clubs. One of the main social impactors that we have in the game, you could argue, is in a little bit of a weaker state with club leagues. We know those are going to be changed sometime in the future, thanks to the roadmap in the most recent Brawl Talk. But a very long time ago, when Brawl Stars felt like a completely different game in beta, there was once a time that clubs were actually called bands. I think it fit really nice with the Wild Wild West aesthetic, but once we transitioned away from that, once Brawl Stars went global and through a ton of different changes, they decided to change the name of bands to clubs, which we have to this day. Our next fact honestly brought back some pretty dang nice memories, and that is the fact that bushes in Brawl Stars used to grow back. It was changed to the way we currently have it now inside of Brawl stars in an update in 2019 when gene was released pretty dang crazy to think what brawl stars might look like if bushes grew back tanks sure would be a lot better right our next fact once again taking a look in the past of brawl stars there was once a time when there was a completely different rarity we all know the rarities that we have right now in the game we've got rare super rare epic mythic legendary and chromatic now there has been a change recently to rarity that I think we should all remember at this point, and that is the removal of the Trophy Road rarity. However, there was another rarity way back in the day before Trophy Road even existed, and that was the common rarity. Now, pretty much so operated the same way as Trophy Road, and the format of that common rarity being changed to Trophy Road actually happened in an update of May of 2018 in beta when Frank and Penny were first released a very long time ago. Our next fact has to deal with my favorite brawler in all of Brawl Stars that honestly threatened his entire imagery that we know and love here today. I think we can all agree one of, if not the the most defining characteristic that Mortis has is his top hat, man. Well, there was once a time that Mortis wasn't going to have his top hat. Don't you think it's kind of strange that Mortis is the only brawler that has two default brawler models? Well, the reason behind that was a considerable amount of community pushback because of their remodel, first remodel of Mortis taking away his top hat in the process. And if it wasn't for or that pushback from the community later, the Brawl Stars dev team reverting it or giving us an option, Mortis wouldn't have his top hat. Our next fact is actually really, really interesting if you ask me. You guys know the pretty red button, the attack button. If you tap that button, we get auto aim. However, did you know when the feature was first implemented and for quite some time, the actual name for auto aim was quick fire? I'm not quite sure what changed the verbiage of this mechanic inside of the game, but dude, I mean, nowadays, if you caught yourself trying to explain the best ways to use Jackie, I would say the only way, auto-aiming, and you used quickfire instead, the people would think you're crazy. What the flip is quickfire? Is it a new feature I've never known about? Moving along to our next fact, and that has everything to do with our good friend Gene, the incoherent goofball. I was quite surprised to be reminded when I was digging around looking for some interesting facts that you guys would find compelling that Gene actually has had three different changes to his sex second star power. Gene's very first rendition of his second star power was actually called Pat on the Back. All it did is it allowed him to heal up his teammates by 2000 HP, but with the caveat that you had to land your super on them. The most powerful tool in Gene's toolbox, in my opinion, being his super, a super that's quite difficult to charge up if you ask me, wasted to heal up a teammate. Guys, you know, we're not talking about 
Coco where you find yourself ripping through like 10 supers a game. You'll be lucky to get like two or three supers with Jean. The second, second star power that Jean ever had was called Spirit Slap, but it allowed Jean to deal an extra 300 damage with his basic attack when he had a supercharged. I'm not gonna lie, I quite liked this star power. I would say a bit more than the second star power he has right now. Call me crazy, I don't know, it's just my opinion, but then the star power that we know and love for his second star power slot, still called Spirit Slap, let's call it Spirit Slap the second, but now Gene's magic hand or his super deals an extra 1000 damage when he hits an opponent. Our next fact once again taking place way in the past with clubs, once again when they were called bands. Now this one surprised me, seeing that I'm so used to how Brawl Stars operates nowadays, to remember that there was once a time that you could have 100 people within your band. I can't imagine how hectic it would be in like club chat with 100 people in there man. Wow. Moving along to our next fact, and that is centralized around modifiers. Now, modifiers were first implemented here into Brawl Stars to try to combat teaming. I believe that was the case because I think it did a fairly decent job doing so. With the literal meteors that fell from the sky in Showdown were programmed to fall more often around people that grouped together. But a variation of the modifiers, a time when they were pretty much so first implemented, was a crazy time in Brawl Stars because modifiers were actually present in every single game mode in trophy based game modes. Quite an interesting fact from the past. Our next fact has to deal with Hot Zone. Hot Zone has been through several different modifications, so much so that the game mode itself almost feels like a really new game mode. But the interesting fact about Hot Zone, when it was first released, the Hot Zone counter, when both teams were standing within one Hot Zone, would stop counting. So if you just had a deadlock in that Hot Zone, nothing would happen. While at the same time, at the end of the time duration, the last 30 seconds, there was a time where you could get double the points. It's hard to try to wrap your head around what that would look like nowadays, seeing that Hot Zone is in competitive gameplay. How different the approach to the gameplay would be, dude. The last 30 seconds, you blitz, you get your whole team in there, you can come back from 0% so easily. It was nuts. Another interesting fact here, in the update when Sandy was released in 2019. Now, if you guys didn't know, inside of Showdown, there is a specific limit to the power cubes that you drop once once you are killed. And that cap where it stands today is five power cube. But throughout the history of Showdown up until that Sandy update, there was no cap to the amount of power cubes that you would drop. How easy it would be just to like trade these power cube crazy totals back and forth and do a showdown and stuff like that. It'd be nuts. Once again, reverting back to the Penny and Frank update while we were still in beta, back when the common rarity was changed to Trophy Road. During that update, we had a few rarity changes that I had completely forgotten about. Before this update, El Primo was considered a common brawler. We could have had a version of Brawl Stars where El Primo was a trophy road brawler. Isn't that weird? And for our next fact here, basically on the same premise, one that I thought was even more interesting than the El Primo was Poco. Poco's rarity was a super rare. Isn't that weird as well? My goodness. Primo and Poco have been rare brawlers since that update, so it's hard to imagine Poco being a super rare. Our next fact about Brawl Stars is about new brawler releases. Guys, whenever an update comes out, it's almost one for one guaranteed we're at least getting one new brawler, right? The way things have been going, we've been getting two brawlers every single update. But this fact I find incredibly interesting because there was once a time back in the past, pre-global release, there were so many updates where we didn't receive a new brawler. And given a time period that we are currently at in Brawl Stars, it just makes you feel weird. I think the closest we ever got here in recent times when Brawl Stars was global, where we didn't get a new brother was when we got that mini update, when the very first few line skins came to the game. But ever since then, we've at least gotten one brother. Our next fact is a personal favorite of mine here, making the list because it has something to do with my favorite brawler, Mortis. Once again, staying on this trend of kind of looking to the past of Brawl Stars when it was a bit more wacky and weird. But when star powers were
were first released, we should know, or if you don't, Mortis's star power Creepy Harvest was very, very different. Instead of getting the HP as soon as you defeated an enemy, how it worked with this first rendition of the star power is once you defeated an enemy, they would drop a green skull. You would then have to pick up that green skull to get the HP back. The amount definitely varied between balance changes. It was like 1,200 upon its release. But the cool thing about this and where I wanted to focus with this fact is, you know, you didn't have to pick up the green skulls on the ground. There was an actual limit to how many green skulls would spawn in, and that's 10. So if you didn't need that HP, you could literally hoard those green skulls across the map. It was insanely fun. But taking it one step further, back in the day, it was quite regular to hop into a game and get duplicate brawlers. So having more than one Mortis in one match. And where I technically wanted to focus this fact on is if you had a duplicate Mortis on your team, you could share skulls, bro. <laughs> so the duplicate Mortis on your team could just be rocking it, getting these kills like crazy and not picking them up. You could literally just like dash on over with his hard work and just pick up his green skull that he produced. It's so funny. So I believe the cap being 10 might have been able to extend past 10 if you had two Morses, maybe 20, or there might have been a hard limiter. But I'm having a fun time experimenting in my head what that might look like. 20 green skulls on the ground. You're looking at a whopping 24,000 potential HP if that was the case that you could just leave scattered around the map at its limit. I find that so dang funny. Our second to last fact here in this episode today once again dealing with mortis here we know here inside of brawl stars there is brawler families groups of three brawlers that fill out a common association right like a wild wild west theme and we also know there are some relationships that we have inside of brawl stars like bell and sam being married pam being the mother to jesse Stu being janet and bonnie's adopted father well there was one that i had no idea even existed and that's within my favorite brawlers trio between Mortis, Ems, and Frank. Did you know that Mortis is Ems's uncle? I tried to do some digging to see if this was like publicly out there, but the way that I ended up stumbling across it was during the patch notes when Ems was released. We got like her first description of what she is like as like a person or a character within the Brawl Stars universe, and plain as day, we can see that Mortis is Ems's uncle. <laughs> That's so funny. And the final one here, a fun callback to the OG players inside of Brawl Stars, a kind of theme we've been sticking to here with these 15 facts of this episode. One that I'm sure you guys will remember, but there was once a tile in the game called TNT. It was specifically in Heist. You would shoot the TNT, it would explode, and of course destroy obstacles around the map. It's basically just like another thing like we know of like teleporters, jump pads, TNTs were just on maps. You can explode them to destroy the obstacles, but now now I can see the use case of it today not being that crazy when you have so many different brawlers that destroy walls as well as the fundamental game mode of heist way back in the day was way way different without having opposite heist safes there was an attacking team and a defending team it was way different but yeah those TNT blocks that are exclusive to the creating your new account section blowing up the boss robot was actually physically in game so funny but there you have it everyone 15 facts here in Brawl Stars some of which I'm I'm sure you did not know before watching this video thankfully and i think largely due to the fact a lot of them were in the past i hope you all enjoyed this if you did make sure to slap a like on it i really appreciate it with that being said have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day keep having fun brawl stars and we'll see you in the next one adios and take care